Hello everyone, Dr. Mungli here. So this video is about pathophysiology of diabetes ketoacidosis which is simply referred as DKA. This video is all about uh, an acute complication of type 1 diabetes mellitus. So I am not going to get into details about uh, pathophysiology uh, like a development of type 1 diabetes mellitus or type 2 diabetes mellitus. I will basically concentrate on what all the pathophysiological changes that will be going on in diabetic ketoacidosis. Let's move on to see what is the pathophysiology here. So with this, with the help of this particular chart, I am going to explain you the entire pathophysiology of diabetic ketoacidosis. So in type 1 diabetes mellitus, there will be absolute or relative deficiency of insulin and that's because there will be a destruction of beta cell mass, more than 80% of the beta cell mass when it is destroyed. So that gives rise to diabetes mellitus signs and symptoms and this is a continuous process, autoimmune destruction of beta cells will be going on. So continuously there will be insulin fall will be going on and absolute deficiency can result in. So whenever there is a decrease in insulin level so that will lead to decreased peripheral utilization of glucose. Especially this will happen because GLUT4 transporters which needs insulin especially on skeletal muscle and adipose tissue so they won't be able to consume glucose that's why there will be decreased peripheral utilization of glucose and this will lead to elevation of blood glucose level so you can see there is that can give rise to elevation of blood glucose here and that is what is written so decreased peripheral utilization of glucose will lead to hyperglycemia now on the other way so decrease in insulin level will lead to skeletal proteolysis so the skeletal muscle proteolysis will go on in response to less amount of insulin in the blood and that's what exactly seen in type 1 diabetes mellitus patients. Now this decrease, so this will lead to basically increase uh, skeletal muscle proteolysis. It means amino acids are released from skeletal muscles and they will be carried to the liver for gluconeogenesis process. It means there will be increase in gluconeogenesis because substrates for gluconeogenesis process are available. Now why there is increase in gluconeogenesis? It's because as you can see here, so decrease in insulin will lead to increase in glucagon levels. There will be increase in glucagon levels in type 1 diabetes mellitus patients. So this increase in glucagon will lead to activation of gluconeogenic enzymes. There are four gluconeogenic enzymes that is pyruvate carboxylase, phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase, fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase and glucose 6-phosphatase. All these enzymes will be activated by glucagon and that will lead to increase in the levels of gluconeogenesis because skeletal muscle proteolysis will give amino acids especially alanine which is going into gluconeogenesis. Now as the gluconeogenesis is increased so glucose outpouring from liver into the blood will occur and that will contribute to hyperglycemia leading to increase in blood glucose level. Now whenever there is elevation of glucagon here so glucagon will lead to adipose tissue lipolysis. It means triacylglycerol present in the adipose tissue is broken down into free fatty acid and glycerol. Now the glycerol will from the adipose tissue that is from triacylglycerol it can go into gluconeogenesis process. So thereby giving increase in glucose levels. And free fatty acids are getting into peripheral tissues and most of it will be going into liver. And in the liver, free fatty acids undergoing oxidation, releasing acetyl-CoA. And when TCA cycle is saturated, acetyl-CoA is converted into acetoacetate and beta-hydroxybutyrate. Acetoacetate is an acidic molecule. Beta-hydroxybutyrate is a derivative of acetoacetate. So these acidic molecules, so they will lead to elevation of 
acetoacetate and beta hydroxy bitrates in the blood and leading to decrease in the pH giving rise to metabolic acidosis and this metabolic acidosis can lead to electrolyte imbalance now on the other way glucose which is elevated in the blood which leads to hyperglycemia so that hyperglycemia will have osmotic diuresis osmotic effect osmotic effects of glucose going giving rise to osmotic diuresis and this osmotic diuresis it will give rise to volume depletion so there will be volume depletion in type 1 diabetes patients especially going into diabetic ketoacidosis and osmotic diuresis will also lead to electrolyte imbalance in these patients now the volume depletion itself can give rise to elevation of catecholamines and cortisol so you can see elevation of catecholamines that is epinephrine and cortisol stress hormone can be elevated note that development of diabetic ketoacidosis in type 1 diabetes mellitus it is all are revolving around elevation of catecholamines and cortisol levels in the blood and this happens after certain infection it can be because of sepsis or it can be because of stress so infection sepsis stress giving rise to increase in catecholamines cortisol and this increase in catecholamines on cortisol so it will lead to gluconeogenesis increase in glucose production in the liver so increase in gluconeogenesis contribute to hyperglycemia so that is elevation of glucose levels in the blood so de- development of diabetic ketoacidosis in type 1 diabetes mellitus it is it has to be triggered by something like infection sepsis or stress leading to elevation of catecholamines and cortisol and this catecholamine on cortisol it they will work synergistically with glucagon thereby there will be increase in gluconeogenesis process and this gluconeogenesis will lead to elevation of blood glucose level so all these features will contribute to hyperglycemia with elevation of ketone bodies that is hyperketotic hyperglycemia is seen in type 1 diabetes mellitus as a complication of it that is diabetic ketoacidosis so let me just quickly review or brief it out diabetic ketoacidosis it begins because of a triggering events like infection sepsis stress giving rise to elevation of catecholamines and cortisol and this elevation of catecholamines and cortisols will act synergistically with the glucagon which is elevated in type 1 diabetes mellitus overall leading to elevation of increase in the levels of gluconeogenesis process and that will give rise to hyperglycemia now gluconeogenesis process is supported by glycerol coming from triacylglycerol process and skeletal muscle proteolysis in the under the influence a decrease in the insulin levels giving rise to amino acids for gluconeogenesis process and absolute deficiency or absence of insulin here can lead to decrease in the peripheral utilization of glucose and that leads to elevation of blood glucose level and hyperglycemia lead to osmotic diuresis osmotic diuresis leads to volume depletion and volume depletion it worsens the elevation of catecholamines and cortisol whereas elevation of ketone bodies in the blood leading to metabolic acidosis and that give rise to electrolyte imbalance process so even the volume depletion will also lead to electrolyte imbalance so all this are the pathophysiological features that are seen in diabetic ketoacidosis signs and symptoms diagnosis management all this probably i'll come up with in some other video thanks for watching as always uh, i will see you in some other video till then take care